horror games is a section of the market that is starting to be very well represented again. Creating in the horror genre is no easy task, movies, games, books, or otherwise. It's not just about a dark room and strange noises, you need to be able to create an anxious environment. Watching a movie is a wholly controlled experience, you're exclusively going to see what the creators want you to. It's incredibly effective when it comes to timing a jump scare or positioning your view in just the right spot to feel vulnerable. When you need to account for the level of agency one has with their hands on the controller, that's when things become interesting. Some of the genre's most defining franchises began decades ago on PlayStation 1. Resident Evil by Capcom in 1996 and Silent Hill by Konami in 1999. Two series that have had very high highs and very low lows. Both Resident Evil and Silent Hill relied less on a multitude of jump scares and more on trying to make a generally uncomfortable setting. It's psychological horror at its core. They also both took place in the third person, which is a camera perspective getting used less and less today in horror because of the sheer viability of trying to scare people from one's eye level. Horror as a genre the last five years has been having what feels like a renaissance. Resident Evil has been ongoing since its inception in the 90s, however, the release of Resident Evil 7 provided a wealth of new eyes on the franchise by altering their formula and switching to a first person perspective. In turn, it became one of the best selling games in the series. Post having some less desirable entries in the series through 5 and 6, which as divisive as they were, they still sold over 10 million each across all platforms. Resident Evil's switch to first person wasn't planned as a series wide change, however. Reimaginings of both Resident Evil 2 and 3 and the success that followed proved there was plenty of room for innovation in both camera perspectives. So much so that Resident Evil Village will soon be receiving an entire rework to accommodate those who want to try in third person, including a new story DLC that's only playable in third person. Capcom has been on top of their game since 2017. The camera choice is very important to the type of horror that follows. When working in first person perspective, it's much easier to get the response you're after from the audience as anything can feel like it's invading personal space. In third person, you have to rely much more heavily on the atmosphere of the world you're in and building an overall anxious environment. Being so much further away from the action comes with its obstacles, but third person can also come with its benefits in that generally speaking, storytelling is proven more effective when you can see the character you're controlling and create a much more visual connection to them. More often than not, in both horror-based games and movies, they fall into the structure of going all in on trying to shock you versus combining that with characters you actually care about. So when stories come along that can effectively provide both of those pillars, you get things like 2017's reboot of IT, Hereditary, The Conjuring, or the incoming remake of Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 is largely considered one of the best survival horror games ever made. It's the one Resident Evil game people were actually asking to be remade. It's also another powerful player in gaming's horror renaissance. Silent Hill has not had a release in over 10 years now. It's not a popular series outside of a strong cult following. The series has across its entire lifespan sold around 9 million copies, whereas on what is supposed to be one of Resident Evil's worst outings, they sold 10 million. Konami has not given the IP much of a chance to thrive as time has passed. There exists no remasters beyond the PS3 generation, the PC ports were not well done, and the franchise has gone dormant. The fallout with Kojima also greatly affected and no doubt halted any form of revival the series was destined to have. PT was the best chance Silent Hill ever had at becoming a mainstream horror IP again. Where the game's marketing campaigns felt non-existent before, the marketing for this playable teaser was so well executed. Horror has indeed generally been lacking in the medium for a long time. If a two-hour demo from eight years ago is the most notable piece of horror talked about in gaming almost ten years later, somewhere we are lacking. PT does not have its reputation because of anything other than a deep understanding of how to utilize horror in video games. Most didn't know Kojima had anything to do with the game until the teaser ended and revealed what it actually was. Its initial success wasn't carried by a name, it was pure quality of work. Naturally, this project didn't get to see its potential realized, and for the last 8 years it's been well documented that people want Kojima to tackle horror on his own terms, and it seems that's coming. Konami had to step away from games for a long time. Rumors went on for years about a licensing situation with Sony and a number of Konami's IP. 
Metal Gear Solid, Castlevania, and of course Silent Hill, that never resulted in anything. But it feels as though the excitement for its revival could be misguided. The grand majority of people who are excited for a new Silent Hill game are not excited for Silent Hill. They are expecting Silent Hills, or what is better known as PT. There is currently no reason to believe Konami is capable of delivering anything close to the quality of PT, and unless it's being licensed to a big developer, keeping expectations in check would be best. The next 12 months are big for horror, both in new content and returning. Ironically, Dead Space and the Callisto Protocol are both releasing within two months of each other. Dead Space, like Resident Evil 4, is renowned as one of the best in its field and has been asked to return for a long time. The Callisto Protocol is a spiritual successor to Dead Space, led by the creator of Dead Space, which is no surprise if you look at it for more than five seconds. Dead Space owned the genre during Generation 7, and as good as it was, it didn't have much competition. Supermassive continues to release entries in the Dark Picture Anthology with another only a month away. The Outlast Trials are approaching, Layers of Fears, and even a new Bioshock game isn't too far off. It's games coming out soon that are of high quality. Konami will be revealing their plans for Silent Hill as an IP via a livestream, followed by Capcom with Resident Evil only days later. You can only hope for the best. By the end of 2022 and even into 2023, most of horror's most defining franchises will be active if not thriving. The release of PSVR 2 is sure to bring with it some uniquely immersive experiences as well. Horror fans are eating well. Pray for Silent Hill. Happy Halloween.